Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Lancaster County Board of Equalization uh, meeting. We are uh, holding a special meeting um, to take final action on the real property valuation protest for 2018. Um, for introduction purposes, uh, my name is Todd Wilchin. I am the chair of the Board of Equalization and the County Board this year. Um, on my left, we have uh, fellow commissioners um, Bill Avery and Deb Shore. On my right, we have fellow commissioners uh, Roma Amundsen and vice chair uh, Jennifer Brinkman. Joining us this morning from the county attorney's office is Jen Holloway. Um, from the county clerk's office, we have the county clerk Dan Nolte, the chief deputy Corey Beatty, and Monica Monet McCollum. Sorry. Also joining us from the county assessor's office is the county assessor. Uh, for the last time, uh, Mr. Norm Aginaw. Um, with that, Mr. Clerk, would you please start the agenda? A copy of Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the regular hearing room. Additionally, a copy of all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk staff at the front of the hearing room. The material is also available on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Agenda item one this morning. Is final action on real property valuation protests for 2018. Uh, Tom Cooper, referee coordinator, of Great Plains appraisal. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. We have a number of packets to return to you today, just to give you a quick, short or overview of the year. Uh, we handled just under a thousand hearings this year. Uh, we had great cooperation again this year from the Lancaster County Assessor's Office, the Lancaster County Clerk's Office, the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office, and the Lancaster County Event Center. It takes a lot of coordination to pull this off, and uh, we certainly appreciate all their efforts uh, to get that done. We've done it in less days this year than we would normally do. We did it in longer days. We piled as many people in as we could uh, just to try and make sure we could be as efficient as we could be. Uh, we used about 35 referees this year. A couple of them went through the training but then never actually got on the schedule because the, we were a little lighter than we had anticipated in terms of volume. Uh, we do do a, a one hour training each year uh, that you'll see on their invoices but it, it allows everybody to get on the same page so that you get a better product. Uh, it's a little hard to do that on the run when we're, when we're doing all the taxpayers during the day so we try to get them ahead of, ahead of time to tell them how we want it documented. Uh, so that we have a, a very good file for anyone who would go on to the state and appeal to the Tax Equalization Review Commission. As you're aware, after you take final action, there will be a 30-day period uh, where they can, these decisions can then be appealed to the <coughs> Tax Equalization Review Commission. Uh, this is a, a solid uh, year in terms of analysis for us because, um, for the most part, the assessor did a revaluation of commercial properties. And with those commercial properties, the analysis uh, was quite a bit more in depth uh, when possible to try and determine what w the value. In a normal year, per perhaps last year, or again, maybe next year when they do residential, you know, we look at sales in the neighborhood, and so the sales comparison approach drives value. When we're talking about commercial properties, when you see a yellow packet of commercial or an orange packet of multifamily uh, over four units, uh, those properties are driven by the income. And so we're, we're talking to people about what are their, you know, what is the assumptions that the assessor has made versus what can we ascertain as their income. Now the problem with this is that in this process we only get what they want to bring to us. And so we don't have the right to demand information, we ask for it. Uh, some of it showed up later and that's why we have additional packets today. Some of that information showed up and we were able to get that analyzed. Uh, in some cases we just didn't have enough to make a decision. In, in, in other words, maybe they brought us the income, but they didn't bring us any of their expense data. And so we can't just say, well, we're going to take your income and the assessor's expenses and assume that that's right to get to what actual value would be. And so we're doing much more uh, analysis of the income and expenses on those, those type of properties. Uh, we've, other than that, we've seen just really, really the, the general run-of-the-mill discussions on value this year. We're in a generally appreciating residential market. Uh, demand is high. Prices are higher. Uh, sometimes it's just how, how, how brave are you or what you want to ask for your property right now. And, and oftentimes, uh, depending on the property, I'm talking to realtors and they're getting multiple offers well over the ask price in the first 24 hours. Uh, so demand is still very high. 
And what that's doing is that's then in turn driving the apartment market uh, because people who can't afford to get into a house or are unable to get one bought are then moving into the apartments and so you'll, you're seeing more apartments coming on now. And so when we talk to the apartment people, their occupancy is, is exceptionally high. Uh, they're ha in fact, some of them told us they're having the best year they've had. Uh, and that's driven by the housing market because there's such demand. And so all those things kind of came into play this year. Uh, that along with, we had a number of tax representatives who are people representing the owners. Uh, they do their own analysis where they calculate a value. They're not credentialed appraisers. They're people pulling things off the internet and putting math together. We try and balance that out against you know, what, what the reality is. Uh, again, we're trying to, to take a look at what, what are they presenting and then what do we know the market is so that we can give you good estimates of actual value, things that are defendable. Uh, I know from a year like this there will be a number of them that will go to Turk. Uh, the thing about that is different, that once they go to Turk, then the, the, the table will switch a little bit and the county will start asking for data. Through the county attorney's office, we'll go through the discovery process and we'll get that information. And then a lot of times once we get that information, you'll see those settlements because it's what we were asking for to begin with, but we couldn't get during this process. And so uh, I totally understand that. Uh, I know that's part of the deal. Uh, and, and we'll deal with that, I guess, if, if they would go to the next level. Uh, so with that in mind, I have a number of packets to return to you today. today. Do you have questions for me before I get started? Any question for Mr. Kubat? Before I get started, I, would, I was remiss that I didn't introduce our intern. This is my son, John Kubert, and uh, John is the third of three sons to be interns in this process, and uh, he's going to go start college this year, so <laughs> he has uh, done a good job keeping me organized. <coughs> Okay, so I have these I'll in, just, uh, in a protest point. number. No, Tom, real quick, I'll make a point. I, at one point, my first job was working for my dad, and people have always asked me, you know, subsequent bosses, how, how bad have they been? And I always say that not as bad as my dad. <laughs> so. Sometimes dads can say things that bosses can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so these are in protest order. This is protest 18-6. Uh, this was a percentage complete issue. Uh, I re-reviewed what's in there. Uh, we had lowered the percentage to begin with, so we went from 270 down to 229,500. We'll stay at 229,500 as our recommendation. Protest 14 uh, provided a tax statement in comparison with another property. Uh, certainly, as you're aware, listing differences lead to differing values. Uh, and the rent levels and the, and the gross rent multipliers uh, that were discussed in the, in the protest were reasonable, so we recommend no change that would remain $151,200. Protest 21 provided a newspaper article. Uh, there's really no evidence of actual value error, so we would stay at $617,400. Protest 30. I provided a comparison with neighborhood homes uh, and an average price per square foot and listing differences do lead to differing values. Uh, I can't give any weight to the average valuation within a, within a neighborhood. We're trying to do specific values per property. Again, no change, $536,500. But, but, yeah, sorry, on our sheet it shows that the difference was a reduction of 39600 Okay. Right, so, the, so there, oh, was the, there was the assessment, the referee's recommendation was 536500 based on the resubmittal. I'm recommending no change that we remain 536500 Okay. okay. <coughs> Protest 36. <coughs> uh, discussed a remodel from 2012. Uh, the data included was previously considered by the referee. 
they were upset that there was an increase in 2018 when no one else in the neighborhood had had that increase. That was because the assessor went out and corrected their listing during 2017. And so we all got to be talking about the same house to get to the right value. So uh, that is reasonable. So we recommend no change that remain $305,900. Protest three, I'm sorry, 39, uh, discuss condition. Uh, really no new data that we hadn't previously considered and there's a recent sale that actually supports the assessor on this actual property. Uh, so we recommend no change that remain $18,200. Protest 55, references and appraisal. Uh, and gave us just only two pages of that appraisal, so we can't really see what went on. Uh, we are aware um, that it did transfer. Uh, one of the things in the summary of the appraisal is they had the appraised val the, the sale prices above the assessor, but they took off an, an exorbitant amount for intangible assets. Hmm. And so we didn't, weren't sure what that was, and so we didn't have a copy of the report, so we would recommend no change, $734,000. Protest 122 uh, gave us a uh, <coughs> set of pictures that the condition that we saw in there appears to be considered by the assessor and there's no evidence of actual value error. So we'd recommend that remain $89,300. Uh, protest 141, and this is in a number of, of uh, what I would say mid-range mid hotel properties that came in this year. Uh, our hotel market is kind of in this state of state of change. We're not quite sure where it's going to land right now. We've been building a lot of units. A lot of demand has come back downtown, and that has hurt some of those uh, hotels that are a little further out. Uh, the market hasn't yet stabilized, and so while their income is down, we don't know where it's going to stabilize. Uh, we only got part of the income that we needed on this property, so uh, their expenses seem a little bit out of range. We really need the full three years to consider to see the trends. Uh, there's not enough information here for a change, so we remain that, it, that it, we recommend no change that remain one million two hundred eighty three thousand eight hundred. Protest one forty two is also uh, a hotel. Uh, really, the same discussion I just had. We have partial the income data, but we don't have enough here to make a decision uh, that would lead us to an alternate value. So it re would remain six hundred eleven thousand dollars. Protest 143, again, uh, the same type of hotel property. We're getting parts of the income, but not enough to make a, a value decision to say that the assessor would be wrong or to lead us to an alternate value. Uh, therefore, it would remain $916,500. Protest 145. Another hotel property. We're only getting parts of the information. These were all in sequence. Uh, it, was, it was handled by one person. Uh, they're, they're just not getting us enough information to make a decision that, that the assessor would be wrong. Uh, so we, we recommend no change that remain $2,032,700. Hey, Tom. So is this uncommon when we, I mean, having this many, I guess, protests from a hotel? Uh, I think this is one person who was chosen as a representative for a number of owners oh. to come in. Uh, the, the, the information we're getting kind of parallels, but it's just not enough there to say, you know, just because your income is down doesn't mean the market's not going to buy. We still have hotel sales happening. <coughs> They're happening at a fairly mm -hmm. high level. And so the values are there even though their income is slightly off. Well, and th that is combined with what we hear anecdotally, which is that there's a, a surplus of hotel rooms in Lincoln right now. Mm-hmm. There, we're, we're building a lot of hotels. Uh, there are certain demand, and, and what we see is as we build the high end, you know, everything shifts down, and then some of them are going to fall off the end. We have some of those that are falling off the end. I talked to one the other day on a Turk appeal where his occupancy the night before was one room. Mm. You know, and so you just can't keep a staff on at one room a night. And so that's, that's a hotel that probably is going to fall out of our market. And what happens to that hotel is kind of up in the air. Uh, so everything is shifting, you know, but they're still selling. Uh, we still see those sales of hotels and we still see them happening. Uh, there's still a demand, uh, 
even though that income is, is slightly off and we're still resetting uh, our market. Protest 149 is a hotel. Same situation. Uh, the expenses are slightly out of range on some of the categories. Uh, we just don't have enough here to say that the assessor is wrong. Uh, so we're going to stay at $1,484,200. Uh, I believe protest 150 is the last one in that sequence of hotels. Again, not enough information to warrant a change, so it would remain $561,900. Could I ask no. a question? Commissioner Avery. Uh, um, we've said no to all of these so far, that we're going to stick with the original. Yes. Um, is that unusual that we would do this always? It seems to me that. I think, I think by the time we get done today, you will hear me say that there are some changes. Ah, well, that would be nice. Yes, uh, uh, there will be some balance. But, uh, another question, aren't, aren't these hotels represented by some professional who uh, knows how the process works, but yet is giving us incomplete information? I'm assuming that they're probably planning to go to Turk because yeah there was hardly any information presented right, in their right. uh, packet. so so were they were there I don't know that they were represented by a tax representative I believe the, the I didn't say that the, I said the, professional I, I believe it was just a volunteer among the group <laughs> okay. who came in and uh, represented what was going on uh, I, I don't believe that I think that if, if these go to Turk, this is where I think we're going to say to them, here's the information you need to provide to us. Multiple years worth of income and expense data, your star report, uh, your occupancy. Prof probably a profit and loss statement. Average daily rates, things like that that we're just not getting. And so uh, it's not enough what they've given us to, to do an appraisal. It's not enough for us to do a meaningful analysis without having to make a ton of assumptions. And I try not to have the referees do that. I try to, if we, if it was the information you received and it's enough to, to, to analyze a value, then let's look at it. But we don't want to just take part of what the assessor says and then part of what the owner says and then try and piece it together because that's not really value. That, that's just piecing it together. Protest 293. Uh, had quite a bit of information in here about the value of the improvements. I think, I think there's an appraisal out there. I just, we just haven't seen the appraisal part of this. Insurance value doesn't really mean a lot to me. You're talking about some of the improvements. This is a brand new home. It, it might be reflective of the insured value, but then they, they want to take the assessor's land value. It, the, the, the parts don't add up here. So at this point, I have to say that it, 525,200 is the best evidence of value, so we would remain no change. So can we go through that real quick? Because sure. they, they did provide a broker opinion. They did. And, and I looked at that broker's opinion, as, I, as you may have. Uh, it was a two-page document that, that gave us a little bit of data. Okay. It's, it's not enough to say, I mean, we have no compare, we, we have, we have a broker picking four houses, I think four or five, that were all over the county that broker is an appraiser. He knows how to do an appraisal. I don't know why he didn't just do one or provide more data. Well, <clears throat> I, I don't understand what a broker price opinion is. So a broker price opinion, and you might notice on that uh, letter that he sent that he said that this is appropriate only for listing purposes, appropriate for, for buyers and sellers and, not, and for no other purpose, and it's not under the jurisdiction of the Nebraska Real Property Appraiser Act. Uh, and that is because that they are allowed to do broker's price opinions, and that, that's an in integral part of our market. Uh, they're allowed to do those actually for tax appeal, but that data didn't give us anything to say it wasn't any better than what the assessor did. And so uh, at this point, my recommendation is you know, there's, there's limited reliance on the BPO. Uh, I mean, he used sales from the urban market against a acreage property. I looked at them and I thought that this just doesn't make any sense. And so at this point, I mean, this one may go, to, may, it may go on to the next level, but, but let's slow it down and let's go do the appraisal and let's actually figure out what it is uh, if the assessor is wrong. 
So recommend no change, 525,200. Protest 334. This is a lot down at 20th and L Street that is zoned for commercial use. Under that commercial use to put a house back on this side. It was originally had a house on it, but the house is gone. Uh, we are unable, to, you will be unable to put a house back on this lot. And so the assessor has it correctly coded as a residential, I'm sorry, as a commercial lot uh, available for development. We looked at the other commercial lots in the area. Uh, the protestant had wanted to compare with two assessments next door that are under houses. And so because the house is still there, they're still classified under residential, so they have a $21,000 residential lot value. It, they're not, they don't do commercial land value and residential house. It's, it's one or the other. So in this case, they had a residential lot with a residential house. That's different than what we have here. We also had testimony that there was a 521 statement at 60700 with it, which was not reflective of market value. We had originally relied on that. When I sat down and I really looked at this, and I looked at the other vacant lots in that area that are zoned the same and their values, uh, I think that we made a mistake in lowering it. I actually think it needs to be uh, at an equitable value $108,600. And so my recommendation is that we reverse the, re the referee's value of 60700 with a new recommendation of $108,600. And, and that's based off of commercial? Based on commercial land values in the area. Not the residential next door. Not the residential next door. And I will also note to you that there are properties directly west of this that are valued, they're, they're vacant, zone commercial land, just like this one, except for they qualify under the 191 program, which is the developer discount. And so they have gone through the statutory requirements to get an assessment that is something other than market value. They're valued actually at 50% of market value, but we can't equalize with those values because this one doesn't qualify for that 191 program. And so there's a lot going on here, but the fairest value uh, is the $108,600 uh, that I have presented. Protest 379. Okay, Protest 379 and 380. Uh, are two properties that sold in a single transaction. Uh, they have since been combined by the assessor's office. Uh, as I went back through the data, the sale of the two parcels is not reflective of the market value. This is in the Trade Center. In the appraisal world, this is pretty easy work because the Trade Center, the state, there is a set sales range that things happen in there. And this one happened outside that range, actually well below that range. And so for some reason, this sale is not reflective of market value. So it's a price point, but it's not reflective of uh, market value. And so we looked at that allocated sale price. Uh, we looked for evidence of personal property involved in the sale for these, these combined parcels. Uh, at this point, we're going to recommend no change on parcel 379. We had originally recommended 85300 We will stay with that, 85300 and on parcel 380, we had originally recommended 431,500, and we'll stay with that 431,500. I just asked a question. Yes. What would be the purpose of doing that? I mean, requesting. I guess I don't understand. I think I think that if you look at the history of this property, they had one property. They were a growing business. They bought the next property, and they just kept it under two tax assessments. And then they sold those two properties to the next buyer. The next buyer says, hey, I'm gonna, this is all one property. I just want to treat it as all one, and the assessor now will be combining that into one assessment okay. parcel. <clears throat> Protest 381. <clears throat> uh, brought up issues that were known by the, assess by the assessor's office. Uh, there's really no new information here for us, so there's no change, 50,400. Protest 383, 
uh, talks about some ongoing fire damage. The condition appears to have been uh, previously considered uh, by the, both the referee and the assessor's office. Uh, we don't really have any evidence of what the alternate value would be, so I'm going to recommend that it be no change, $143,300. Protest 384 uh, brought up some floodplain issues and some parking issues that were previously considered. Uh, we don't have any of the income data on this property. It's, it's occupied by a tenant. Uh, at this point, I'd recommend no change, $652,000. Protest 413, uh, Mr. Schmidt uh, worked with the assessor's office uh, on some land use issues. They were corrected, so the value I'm going to give you is an assessor recommendation. So there's a change from $145,800 down to $115,000. The next three properties were involved in a cumulative transfer. Uh, and they then allocated that transfer price among the properties. We researched it and it appeared to sell between related parties uh, in lieu of foreclosure. We believe foreclosure may have been involved. So I can't give a lot of weight to the allocated sale price here. And so uh, there's no evidence of the actual value being an error. So with that in mind, I would recommend no change on 414 that remain 105,300 on 415 that remain $87,000 and on 416 that remain $211,500. Protest 423, uh, I did review the uh, comparison data within the neighborhood uh, and certainly as you've heard me say there are differing reasons for differing prices. Uh, sometimes the assessor is high, sometimes the assessor is low. When the median assessment ratio in our county is in the 90s, then we know that probably 50% of the properties that sell will sell above the assessment, and approximately 50% of the properties will sell below the assess assessment. That's just statistics. And so in any given neighborhood, I can find some that are selling below the assessment and some that sell are selling above. And so uh, there wasn't enough here to say that, uh, that uh, we would change our value from the 435,000 that we recommended. Uh, and so at this point, I'm gonna recommend no change, 435,000. Protest 426. Provided a letter with some condition pictures, as well as some data uh, related to their 2017 appeal, which apparently is still uh, working its way through the state appeal at the Tax Equalization Review Commission. The condition issues that they have noted are considered by the assessor. Uh, listing differences lead to actual values and the CMA, the one page CMA was not actually conclusive to, to a value error. Um, in our housing market, and I look at this house and I look at this price and I think this, this, could, be, this could be reasonable. And so I'm gonna recommend no change, $323,600. Protest 427, uh, during the hearing, uh, and just so you know, when people come out to the hearing and they're questioning the listing on the property, we direct them to the assessor's office. Uh, the assessor's office is in charge of maintaining the correct information. Uh, we're, we're trying to be the referees of value and not the referees of, of, of listing properties. Uh, this is one though, they did contact the assessor's office, the assessor went out You'll note on there they were requesting an increase in the valuation. Uh, the assessor did go out and correct their listing. They do have a new value, uh, so it would be raised. It would be changed from 147,900 to 158,100. I have seen reference in some emails that I've seen to an appraisal that is above that value, uh, but I have not seen that appraisal, so we didn't get it considered. 
Uh, we've also seen that it's posted for sale, uh, listed on the market at this point at high, a value higher than the assessment. So I guess we'll stay tuned and see what happens. What is it listed for? Uh, I believe that number was $220,000. So uh, for consistency within the neighborhood, and I, I know it's, it's going to sell above and below the assessment just based on statistics. That would may, may be one that sells above. Uh, but I would recommend $158,100. How long has it been listed? Do you know? Uh, I do not have that information. Oh. July 12th. Oh. Protest 431. Uh, this is the former restaurant property at 61st and O Street. Uh, according to the Lincoln Journal Star, this will be a new site for Panera Bread facility. That building is down now. Uh, again, I'm going back in my mind to January 1st. Uh, so the building was there. The project was announced. I looked it up. The project was announced in the spring of 2018. And so at that point, the, value, the building did have value. Obviously, if we went to value it right now, the, house, the building is gone. It would, it would be land value. Uh, so at this point, as of January 1st of 2018, it would be $1,001,000. Protest 434 provided a uh, purchase agreement. Uh, a lot of that purchase agreement where it's well below the assessor's value appears to be based on the uh, current condition of the property. Uh, I gave way to the current purchase agreement. And I will also tell you that on the front of each packet, we have the option of checking a box for the assessor that we really want them to look through that packet. Some of it doesn't have things that will entertain them, but some of it has information that they really need. And this is one of those that we've checked the front of it that we really want them to go through because we think they need to get out there and check that condition uh, so that we're all talking about the same house. So we recommend a change on this one, $95,000. The next series of four uh, are suburban bank locations. We heard from a few banks, but, but, but not a lot. Uh, she provided some submarket survey data, but no evidence of value error. And she did that, uh, at least on this first one, 517. Uh, there's nothing in there that, that showed us a different value, so $1,146,400. When you think about banks, I mean, we all acknowledge that the market is changing. A lot of us do online banking. Wait, which one are we on? It was on four, five seventeen. Okay, there was one for four seventy eight before that. Would you put a little asterisk by that? I'll come back to that. Okay. Looking for four seventy eight. No, I think it's just a big one. We'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. Yeah, it's a five point three million dollar difference. Yeah. It may just be out of order, but okay. we'll come across it. Okay. It's, the file's got to be somewhere. It's, it's always somewhere. Uh, so 517 is, is a no change. Yeah. Uh, $1,146,400. 518 provided some, some value analysis that wasn't supported by actual market data. Uh, there's really no evidence of actual value error, so again, no change, $1,645,500. Protest 519 uh, provided some, some value analysis that wasn't supported by market data. Uh, there's no evidence of actual value error, so no change, $2,074,600. And 520. Uh, provide some value analysis that was not supported by the market. There's no evidence of actual value error, so $1,325,000. Protest 520. Okay, wait a second. Did we skip one again? Mm -mm. Did we? That was, I thought that was 520. 520. Did we skip 519? Oh. Did we, did we I did 519. Mm -hmm. 2074600 Sorry, I was... In, in protest management, uh, as Commissioner Shore noted, the files are always somewhere. I now have 478. So 
So going back to 478, the assessor's value is $12,657,000. We have a number of values floating around on this property. We have a auction sale price at $5,512,500. We have some discussion of personal property at a million six. Uh, in this process and into the public record, an appraisal of this property has been submitted that was completed prior to the auction sale. That, that appraisal value was $7,350,000. Uh, that was our original recommendation was $7,350,000 as the market value. Uh, we are unclear that the $5,512,500 is a market transaction. When we look at that value and we break that down, it's around $50 a square foot before I even consider the personal property issue. I know in our market that the, that property, that office properties, even the large ones, are gonna be well above $50 a square foot. And so that puts up a red flag on that auction price as whether that reflected market value. We did go out and find a listing on this property prior to the auction. It was at, it was at, there was an asking rent of $13.50 per square foot per year, just for rent. Now when you translate that into value, that puts you in that $125 to $140 a square foot range if you translate that income into value. And so now I've got that in my mind, I've, I've, and I've got this sale over it here at $50 a square foot, and I don't have enough evidence here to say, that, to say that that's a great sale because that would indicate that, that all the large office buildings in our market are worth $50 a square foot, and that just is not true. And so I'm going to recommend no change, that we stay at the $7,350,000 uh, as the best reflection of market value uh, based on the data that's been presented. So, Tom, so, I mean, uh, this is a unique building because of obviously the size and location. I would think the only thing that would be somewhat comparable would be like the old Experian building, the MSC. I mean, do you look at the different areas where these buildings are located? Because I mean, this is more of an, you know. Based on the size, this is 112,000 square feet. You know, this is a regional building. Right. You know, you're talking about regional buyers, regional sellers. Uh, <clears throat> I think that in this case, and in, mo in a lot of auction cases, whether this was a house, I mean, take it out of this, that it's a large property. Let's make it a house for just a moment in our thinking. If a house was the owner didn't want anymore, just gave it back to the bank and the bank auctions it off, is that a market sale? Well, it is if we can get, you know, if we get it exposed to the market and everybody's acting in their best interest. I don't know that that's happened here. And I just don't have that information. Uh, but this, this property has a regional market to answer your question. And I, and I think that yes, location, finish, size, uh, we've been around it on different appraisal assignments in the last few years as Innovation Park has uh, sold from the university into private ownership. We've seen this property. Uh, we've seen the, 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 the leases on other properties in that area. Uh, we believe that the market value exceeds the auction price. The best evidence that I have of a value would be the seven million. I think if it were occupied and it were exposed to the market, it may bring more than that. It may bring a number closer to 12. By the way, but that 125 to $140 a square foot that I mentioned, if you take that lease rate and extrapolate it out, that leads to a value more like 15 million. And so I think there's more, there's more chapters on this property to be known yet. My best, my best evidence and my best recommendation to you is that we go with that appraised value, the $7,350,000. And this would be one of those properties that would more likely end up in Turk. Uh, that would be at the discretion of uh, either party could take that. Either you could take it to Turk or the appellant could take it to Turk. But what, what about the difference between the current assessed value? From the, fr from the 12 million down to yeah. the 7 million? Right. And so, and so I'm just looking at this, the data I have. I have the assessor's information. I have a, a, an appraisal. Uh, done, done without motivation. I mean, this is the pre-auction appraisal. And where should this sell? Done, done for uh, the seller in that case. 
I, I think it's the cleanest look at value at this point. Well, but I think to Commissioner Avery's question, the 12 million was what, what it was assessed at when it was operated by Verizon. Correct. The, the landlord. The previous value in 2017 was 12.1 million. The value for 2018 was 12.6 million. Uh, and then and then Verizon left and, and, and the sale occurred. Protest 521. Uh, this is a large office building on the east side of town. <coughs> Uh, the value presented is in the range of the data presented. Uh, from my memory, late last night, I believe it's in the $130 a square foot range, uh, which we just talked about uh, on that other building as, as a potential value. Uh, the value uh, of the assessor is within the range of the data that's presented by the tax representative. Uh, the actual value doesn't, doesn't in, is not indicated, and the average price per square foot is really not relevant. We're trying to get to the, to the specific value of property. So no change, $5,946,300. Protest 522 provided an assessment of comparing assessments. Uh, certainly listing differences lead to differing values. Uh, and so there's recommend no change, $187,100. Protest 542. The condition and the location noted by the protestant appear to be considered by the county. Uh, the county has also considered the floodplain location. So we recommend that no change, $91,800. Protest 550 gave us a summary of their value history and a Well, it's, I, I call it vague. It's a vague reference to a sale. Uh, it wasn't anything that we could really follow up on to do any analysis on. Uh, there's no evidence of a value error presented, so I'm going to recommend no change 171 200. Protest 562. Uh, so, under Nebraska statute, if you are a qualified Section 42 housing, uh, there, are, there are certain uh, programs that you can go through and you submit information and you can be valued based on that program. It's very specific to this uh, Section 42. Protest 562 is a low-income housing in a different program. It's in what's called a Section 8 program. Again, it's subsidized, but it doesn't qualify for their actual income under their low-income status to be considered in the valuation. There's no specific statute allowing for a variance from market value for Section 8 housing. And so what happened on this one, as I look at it, is we gave too much emphasis to their actual income, which is based on their program, and I get that. Uh, but, but we have to bounce it back against the market, and the market is actually more reflective of what the assessor has. And so, unfortunately, I'm recommending a change back to the assessor's value of $3,408,000. So can we go back, start over? Yes. So this, it, it, I'm confused by the Section 8. Okay. And so, I, mean, I know the difference of the programs. Okay. So can you walk us through that again? So contra I'm contrasting Section 42 housing right. and Section 8 housing. Right. The Section 42 housing group has gone to the legislature and they have provided a special valuation methodology for those qualifying properties. It involves them submitting three years of their income and expenses by, I believe, October 31st of the prior year. And then they take an average of the income and expenses, and then the, the state sets a cap rate, and that becomes the value. It's very methodical. It's just a formula. Section 8, you may choose to be in that program, but you're not valued under any special pro, any special valuation. It's based on your the, the potential market income of that property and not your contract income. Well, and it's because under Section 8, the uh, subsidy goes with the individual in most cases, and that that then they pay a third of their income. Correction. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. And then the federal government makes up the remainder two third up to market rate. 
the owner is generally made whole right. in that case in terms of the income. They have additional expenses that go with that Section 8 in terms of auditing and mm -hmm. management and things. things. And so that's why we just can't give it a lot of emphasis. They've, they've got some, some non-market driven <coughs> income and expense factors that for assessment purposes have to be excluded. And in order to exclude those, we have to go with the market. So market rent, market expenses, market cap rates, market value. Does that make sense? And that's universal for all Section 8? That is universal for all Section 8. Oh, wow. So $3,408,000, that's the original assessor's number. Protest 596 provided some tax comparisons. Uh, this was information that was all previously considered during the process. Uh, so that reduction from 135,600 was the original assessment down to 122,500. Uh, that was what was considered in that. Uh, certainly, again, I would point out that listing differences just lead to different values. Uh, so I recommend no change that we remain at the original referee's recommendation of $122,500. <clears throat> The next four uh, deal with a large car dealership uh, out near North 27th and I-80. They provided some valuation analysis and some pictures. Uh, I did go through it. Uh, the, the condition is already reflected in the assessor's record and the market data that they presented was not comparable. It was not better than what the assessor had available for, to them. Uh, it was not the, the evidence that you would choose or not the comparables that you would choose if you did a, a, an individual actual appraisal process. So I would recommend no change on 648, that it would remain $1,759,000. On 649, that would remain $8,321,500. Uh, on 651, that it would remain $1,590,000. And the next one is 653, that it would remain $2,498,900. Uh, on 656, is a house that has, this, has ongoing renovations. Uh, they provided some pictures. I noted that the assessor was a, visited the site in December of 2017. Uh, their notes kind of contrast what's in the pictures. It's, re it's just ongoing. Um, I looked at what probably was left to do, <laughs> and I'm going to recommend that it be lowered slightly from $432,000 to $377,800. I always recommend people that are doing renovations to their home that they take pictures directly on January 1st because that's really what we need to see so we know where they're at. Uh, I have to make the assumption that those pictures are in that time frame. Protest 687 <clears throat> uh, provided comparison with their neighboring values. Listing differences lead to different values. I'd recommend no change, $425,200. Protest 699, I was talking about some bath in the basement. Uh, Based on what I can see, and the assessor has not been in, I went ahead and deducted a value for a bathroom in the basement. So I'd recommend a change here from 261,100 down to 259,600, uh, with the request that the assessor go out and visit the site, and let's just and, and, and verify the entire listing. I mean, I guess going back to that, did they provide photos? There were photos in there. Okay. Just they need to be ver verified. <laughs> Protest 785 uh, is an apartment complex. 
that was purchased for low-income housing. Uh, and then some things noted by the condition. Uh, this is one where they're showing us their low-income housing program, but it's not been qualified into the 191 program that I previously described to you. Uh, so again, we're, we're looking at market. Uh, and so as we looked at the market value, it, it seems reasonable. And so we're going to recommend no change, $6,359,100. Well, so I was looking, what, is it just workforce housing or was it an actual program based, did they stay, say? I, I, don't, I don't believe I know. Yeah. You know, as we get to the next one, I mean, the, the problem we have is here we have, we have 48 hours and they're giving us 50 pages of their rent roll with, without expenses to really consider. And so we just don't have the pieces that we need to say that that $6 million value is wrong. Okay. Uh, and the same is going to be true on six. I'm sorry, 786. Uh, there's not enough there to say that that the assessor is wrong, so we're going to recommend that we stay two million two hundred sixty-eight thousand nine hundred dollars. Protest 788. But I, I guess my question, though, on that one is, then how does the assessed value go up 1.6 million dollars? Okay, so that's that's a great point. In the, in the 1,000 properties that we looked at this year, we'd never looked at, the, at, what, at how much it went up. Because quite frankly, we're talking about the value on 2018 and some are gonna go up a lot, some are gonna go up a little, some went down. I'm looking at 2018. And so I just can't look at, we, we shouldn't be focused on 17 and what it went up uh, because the assessor, this is a property that's gone undergone significant renovations. Uh, if you look at this investor and their properties around town, they have done a lot of work to them. Uh, over the last five years, they've taken properties that were in their midlife uh, and really done a great job renovating them, really been a great asset to our community, but that creates value. And I think the assessor is picking that up as they go, uh, but I did not review any of the prior values. Protest 788. Uh, again, this is one that's sold in a group of properties uh, and then the protestant would want to allocate some of those out. Uh, when, you, when you're dealing with a group of properties, it's a different dynamic than is one property selling or, or one market value that we're trying to estimate as we stand here today. And so uh, there's really not enough here for us to note that. We did note that the sale was disqualified by the assessor's office and that's mostly likely due to the group sale oh, yeah, of multiple there's... properties. It's very difficult to allocate one property out of a group, uh, a group sale situation like that. So we recommend no change, $245,400. Protest 796 provided partial expense data and then they kind of filled in around it with the assessor's data. Uh, it led to an overstatement of the expenses because some of those expenses they didn't understand were actually in their number. And so uh, the combined income data really kind of distorts the value. There's really no evidence of actual value error here, so I'm going to recommend no change, $155,500. Same comments are true for 797 with the combined actual and pro forma from the assessor's office leading to a distorted value. I would recommend no change, 167,800. Protest 798 has the same issue of actual expenses being combined with the assessor's pro forma, to, which overstates and distorts actual value. Recommend no change, $181,000. Protest 811, I was in the, I was in the room uh, when he was talking to you the other day. I do understand the challenges of a property uh, as it ages. Uh, do I, I do understand that those properties still sell in the market. We don't really have any evidence that it wouldn't bring 106,400 even with the issues that were presented. Therefore, I recommend no change, Protest 818. 
provided pictures and a CoStar report, which is a descriptive report from the CoStar group, which is an online subscription service. Uh, it is partially occupied, partially not occupied. There's really not any evidence of actual value error, so it will remain no change. Three million one hundred sixty-one thousand dollars. Protest eight nineteen also same protestant provided pictures along with the CoStar report. It appears to be partially occupied. Uh, we don't have any income data and expense data, uh, so I'd recommend no change. One million seven hundred and two thousand five hundred dollars. Protest 824, provided an appraisal, a uh, copy of the appraisal, uh, at least most of the appraisal appeared a couple pages were missing, but uh, I could uh, ascertain exactly what the appraisal was. If you looked at that appraisal, you'll note that it was completed by me for a different purpose. Uh, I decided that I did a good job, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to recommend a change. Four hundred sixty-two thousand one hundred dollars. Four sixty-two. And the reason that's an odd number is that the appraisal was slightly older, so we time adjusted it to January first of two thousand eighteen. Protest eight twenty-six uh, deals with a car wash facility in Malcolm, Nebraska. If you've driven by it lately, and I have, you'll know that it's not operational. Uh, it's more of just a shell, and even that would be maybe overstating what's there. So I'd recommend that this be lowered from 18600 down to $7,800. Protest 828. Uh, also provide an appraisal. Again, I reviewed it. It was one that I had done. Time adjusted up to January 1st of this year. We'll have so the value will be lowered to $451,200. So protest 832, 841, all have a similar story. These are properties that are involved in many ongoing appeals to the state. Uh, these, have, these properties have appeals that, uh, from 2018 all the way back to 2014. Uh, we met with this uh, investor yesterday regarding all of the pending appeals including the 2018s, uh, he was very forthcoming with his income and expense data. He gave us exactly what we would have requested uh, from the Turk process. Uh, these, there were 32 cases involved, 32 appeals uh, on, these, on these properties alone, and actually, and some others that were not involved this year. Uh, we have reached a resolution on all those cases, hmm. and those resolutions then I have brought forward into what I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know why his properties are, are being valued so differently than the actual income and expenses. His actual income and expenses were very reasonable once I, when I, when I looked at them and I, I've gone through them over and over. Uh, they're very reasonable. And I just don't know why that, those values are off. Uh, but as you know, I'm going to get up here, I'm going to tell you the right thing. And uh, so these will re involve some reductions. So 832. Can I just real quick? Yes. Um, for housekeeping purposes when I click on a link for these protests it takes me to the assessor's website Uh, and quite frankly, the, the decisions that we discussed with him yesterday was based on the information he brought forward during the protest process. Oh. So, can you tell me, for the record, who you were negotiating uh, with? Who's we were talking to uh, a representative of these ownerships. His name is David Schlossberg. S L O S B U R G.
So with that in mind, protest 832, uh, this, this is, for reference, this is Rockledge Commercial Properties near 84th and Van Dorn, recommending a reduction based on the, the Turk settlements and Turk analysis and the analysis of his income and expenses. The revised value would drop from 4 million 796 700 to 3 million 272 700 dollars protest 834 is a retail strip center near 70th I'm sorry 70th and pioneers it would be reduced from 2 million 48 thousand seven hundred down to one million five hundred twenty seven thousand dollars protest 835 would remain unchanged so it would remain two hundred seventy nine thousand dollars protest 836 uh, this this is a significant reduction from one million six hundred twenty one thousand one hundred down to four hundred and twenty thousand dollars there was a sale in december of 2016 on this property at four hundred thousand dollars the challenge that it has is is the assessor has it classified as an office site it's really more of an apartment site and that's where he's headed uh, and what's going to happen is because there's a radio tower next door you've got a bunch of extra expenses uh, in terms of construction costs because there's a tower if you're aware at 45th and vine and so that's what influenced that sale price. And so the sale price really is the best reflection of value here. Uh, and it does make sense in lieu of the market and his extra expenses. So $420,000. <coughs> Protest 837. Uh, this is an apartment complex near 44th and O Street. Would drop from 22,789,100 down slightly to 22,440. Protest 838 is an apartment complex near 50th and R Street. It would drop from 21,308,300 down to 21,180. You mean 21 million? 21 million, 180,000 oh, dollars. I think Thank you did the same thing. And that thing was the before. truth. Yeah, yeah the, the, one the time ahead before of it. you did yeah. that too. So. Sorry. Three extra yeah. zeros. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It was 22,440,000 on 837. Correct. Okay. And how much was it for 838? 22 million. The good news is I have the numbers written here too. 21,180. Okay. Are we up to 800? Protest 839? Yep. Yep. Uh, this is an apartment complex near 84th and Van Dorn. From 18,515,400 to 16,250,000 dollars. Protest 840, apartment complex near 72nd and Pioneers. Uh, includes two parcels. The first parcel is 840 from $8,771,000 and 300 to $8,107,500. 8,107,500. Parcel 841 would change from $10,538,600 would be reduced to nine million one hundred forty two thousand five hundred dollars protest eight forty eight provided a map of some assessed values uh, there are differing reasons for those differing values and the data was previously considered, so we're going to remain $777,000. Protest 850 provided pictures and estimates for renovation work, uh, as well as comparables of some other assessments. The condition appears to be reflected in the assessor's record. Uh, the listing differences lead to differing values. We'll recommend no change, $145,000. Well, so, and this was a cost to cure. I mean, was there by chance a 
request to have the assessor do a visit? Uh, there is not, but there can be. Okay. Protest 865 included a letter that I read several times, uh, but there wasn't anything pertaining to value in there. Uh, I recommend that no change that remain $3,200. Protest 881, provided some comparable assessments and some pictures. <coughs> Appears as though the taxable value analysis was based on the living area, basement, and garage areas. We tend to, tend to focus on the livable area. Uh, we an analyze the data on a livable area and the current reduction is well supported. So we re recommend that we stay at the referee's recommendation value, $525,800. Protest 884 uh, is, was a letter that showed up late yesterday. He's talking about a vacant lot that, that's utilized in conjunction with his apartment complex. Under the zoning down there, I don't believe that that parking is required. I get that it, that it's, that it's, it has utility for that. Uh, maybe his tenants like that, uh, but that doesn't mean that it has to be there, so it still is excess land, residual land. We do agree with the assessor's office. We recommend no change, 340600 Protest 887 provided a part of the letter that came with 884. Um, there's really no evidence of what the rental rates are. He doesn't like what the assessor's using, but I'm, I'm not even quite sure what his, his point was. I recommend no change, $434,300. Protest 889 provided an email, I believe, with references to condition paved road access in comparison with other properties. Listing differences lead to differing values. The condition appears to be, have been considered by the assessor. There's no evidence of alternative value. I recommend no change, $405,300. Protest 899 provided some testimony the other day uh, in front of this board regarding their occupancy issues due to neighboring properties. Apparently the subject property is well maintained, but the neighbors are not. Uh, there wasn't anything in here that uh, would lead us to a different value and the income data seems to support the assessor's analysis. And so we recommend no change, $609,800. Protest 905. considered this along with protest 950 they really function as one unit uh, and the value differences on the land are consistent with the different characteristics we'd recommend no change that remains one million sixty eight thousand eight hundred dollars protest 907 provided a comparison with one property certainly listing differences lead to differing values there's no pattern of error no evidence of actual value error. Recommend no change, $369,700. Protest 908, provide a comparison with one property. Listing differences lead to differing values. There's not a pattern that I see here. There's no evidence of actual value error, therefore $385,900. Protest 911, provided one property to compare with. Listing differences lead to differing values. There's not a pattern of treatment. There's no evidence of actual value error. Recommend no change, $385,900. Protest 950, uh, as I indicated, we had previously considered this with 905. They function together. Uh, the allocation is considered. Uh, recommend no change. Okay. so. When we take 905 and 950, you're getting the income from the total property 
and that requires the use of the other site. And so the proper thing to do is then reduce the value of the improved site by the value you have on the other site. So you get to the total value. And so this one has the reduction on it. And so this one's going to be reduced from 6505500 down to $5,436,700, which is the difference in the value in protest 18905. Can you explain that? Yep. So we have a building that sits on two sites, two parcels, and the building sits across both. And then we're valuing it based on the income. And so that income drives the total value. And so the way we do that is we get the total value on one, we deduct the value of the land on the other, and it still adds up to the whole. And so the math works here. Uh, we see this quite often when two sites are required. Okay, but then that I think sometimes causes confusion when people look at the parcels yeah. without knowing that. In my perfect world, we would combine both of those and we just have one value, one parcel. Uh, but for whatever reason, sometimes it might sit across tax districts or fire districts or some kind of something else that the tax rate would be slightly different and they would not be combinable. And so then, we'll, then we end up with two parcels. So then how do you attribute the income to one parcel versus the other? We value the whole based on the income, and, and let's just say it's a million dollars on the one. If the land value over here is 200000 then we would re deduct it over here so that the total still adds up to the million, and that's what we did. I still don't, I mean, because if they're in different taxing districts, then that would either create a it's advantage a, it's or a It's administratively two parcels. It's really only one but they're not breaking up the improvements between the two parcels. They're only doing the, the improvements on one parcel. Right, I just don't understand how you can attribute the land values separately than the building. Yeah, their option would be to leave the entire value on one parcel and put zero on the other one. But because there's land there, we put the land value there. Okay. That'd be the only other mathematical option. Protest 951. Provided uh, the income and expense data that we had previously requested, uh, we'd recommend a reduction uh, from four million one hundred eighty-eight thousand four hundred to three million six hundred twenty-nine thousand nine hundred dollars. I have reached the end of my pile. Do you have any numbers that are left on your list? Um, can we go back to the? number of parcels that we, I think we talked about it earlier, I think you and I talked about it, but the properties that you had settled this year? Yes. And for prior years? Yes. So that, not only is that for 2018, those are, so you negotiated a settlement for all those cases? It does. It's Correct. Brilliant. Okay. Correct. So all the cases included in the 18s uh, were discussed in the meeting yesterday. Uh, and, and that way we could really sit down and, and, and show him how we were trending them because they did change over that time period. We didn't just set one value and apply it to all years. Uh, there are a number of values that come up for each parcel. Okay. Um, Commissioner Avery. Tom, would you mind going back to 839? I believe that was reduced and I lost my place. You have 839? Oh, I've got it here. I have it reduced to sixteen million two fifty. Mm -hmm. Correct, sixteen oh, million yeah. two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Kubert? Um, I, and I'm maybe sure you don't have, have this figure yet on the printout that we were working from the. Uh, Total reduction prior to the day today was six million seven hundred dollars. Do you have a total with the changes you've given us today? I do not. This would be the first time the county has heard these numbers. Okay. Thank you. We we want to see how much bragging we can do. <laughs> because of reductions. Okay. Um any any other questions? Yeah. Um, seeing none, I would, I guess, entertain a motion. 
I move we accept the recommendations of the referee coordinator for the 2018 real property valuations as established by the record, except where the Board of Equalization determined a revised value was warranted during the appeal process. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to move to accept the recommendation of the referee coordinator for the 2018 real property valuations as established by the record, except where the Board of Equalization determined a revised value was warranted during the appeal process. Uh, is there any discussion? Oh, come forward. Um, yeah, please state your name and my name is Ronald J. Pala and I'm representing my son Michael and um, just a couple of observations if you would go to 423 um, I guess I served under Governor Bob Kerry through David Heineman and I served a commission and I know that you can't be experts in all fields that you deal with so you depend on other people, other agencies to give you information. I gave a one page that stated I was talking about current exhibits A and B, the properties were built within one year of one another, most recent sales and purchases were all within one year of one another. The current evaluations of the comparables, not that I chose, that you chose, are the ones that are exhibited. They are current assessed values. So if you look at all of that and you look at the purchase price of the property, I'm just not certain of how you get to that number. If you can show me a mathematical or a reasonable a way for that to get um, a 30, 40 percent increase would be of some value. I, 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 I guess I'm, I, I, I listened about the word market value, and I will say one thing. Uh, I used to do that myself when we got into a long <laughs> procedure. When he said 21 million and then said 12,000 or whatever it was, head spin like that, that was a good way to find out whether anybody fell asleep while he was given his presentation. So I understand that, but he used the word market value enormous amount of times. Now, if you purchase something at market value and there's nothing that's inflated that value of that property. In fact, I would say that the property was devalued because fireplaces were taken out, jacuzzis that quite frankly weren't, weren't desired and didn't work, um, ceramic tile in the kitchen that they said was remodeled. <laughs> Actually, there was ceramic tile, it's now linoleum. Um, I guess those are things that I, I'm, not, I'm not understanding why the recommendation stays. I, I, I know what he told me, you got another process, but I'm saying there's some place for, I think Mr. Avery, if I remember right, I remember you working at the tall building down at the end of the mall here. So I've, I've had, I, when I seen your face, I recognized I didn't have to look at the name but there's some place where the buck has to stop. I went to Lancaster Man, uh, 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 Event Center and I gave all of the information to the young man. We had a very reasonable, very, I thought, productive. I gave him all the information um, and um, et cetera. And after our 15 minutes or so I left and uh, I, I get the paper and of course um, there's a 50,000 reduction but when you've increased something by 40 percent why um, that just didn't seem acceptable and um, um, so um, 
I guess that's my statement. I, I, I would ask you, you're the governing body, to look at this simple math that's working with market values, current dates, comparables that not I took, that was given to me, using their current values of 2018 and everything that was done at purchase time. So we're talking about something that was equitable, and I used that word yesterday, and I noticed it was used today. And I don't think best estimates, we're not in a best estimate era, I don't believe, not with all the technology we got. We can, we can do better than that, and we've got a, a mind of our own to look at something. And uh, if I go to motor vehicles and I bought a new, uh, what do you call it, uh, Volkswagen, and I have a new Lexus, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be charged the same tax. I'm not going to pay the same sales tax, and I'm not going to pay the same car tax. I'm asking you to review this property in good faith, and uh, I think if you do that and look at exactly what's here, nothing is, you know, when I got all through, I never looked at anything on my son's property. I just took what I was, I was given as, here's why you're, we're coming up with this number. There was no way for me to find it, so um, I, I was disappointed this morning when I was told uh, I'm not changing and uh, you have another protest. Um, well, and so, I mean, I, I appreciate that. Um, so I'll tell you the same thing I told people that attended on Tuesday, and the same thing I told them last year, which is what we're looking at is the alternative value, which is sometimes doing the comparable on paper doesn't work. You need a third party, uh, you know, alternative value estimate opinion, whether that be an appraisal or a market analysis or some, and that could also be done you know, by the assessor's office through a informal site visit. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're if you're going to argue that the quality or the condition of the house is different, or the property is different, I mean, again, you, you need that third party, I guess, inspection. But and then, like I said, at, at this point in this stage, it's difficult to do, and that's why we're kind of um, working with what the. Uh, uh, Re referee coordinator has recommended and and you do have uh, you know the uh, you can you know the process you can obviously t take the case to Turk and, and have them you know determine an, an, another value but again that they'll probably ask for the same thing which is the third party alternative value so I think that's we, we appreciate you coming today yeah well I'm just saying I, I looked at rating and and, and I looked at a couple of things that were on the printout sheet from the assessor's office, and I go, well, this says rating, this says satisfactory, this says five satisfactory plus. And he said, no, that's not rating. That should be actually condition. Well, I said, then if that's condition, then you would have to go almost flip that from five satisfactory plus to less. And so when I look at all those things and then I ask for a couple of codes, then I was given um, this property is not to be used as a comparable. Yeah, and that's, yeah, and I, I would encourage your son to contact the assessor's office. Well, okay. I've, I've done everything I can. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, uh, no further discussion. Uh, please call the roll. Avery. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Shore. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Wilshire. <clears throat> motion carries five to zero. We are adjourned. Oh, I think. Second motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I move to close the Board of Equalization acting upon the individual re real property valuation protest for 2018. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to move to close the Board of Equalization acting upon individual real property valuation protests for 2018. Um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Okay, now we are adjourned.